Pilot Hockey Eagles post game show. Uh, the gang is all here, and John McMullen is coming up in, in just a little bit. So the Eagles went 17 to 16, and if you look at this game, they they took advantage of a team that kind of wasn't ready to win in the Indianapolis Colts. And that's taking nothing away from what the Eagles did on the last drive because they put it in the hands of their quarterback. He made a couple of big runs, one for a first down uh, to, to get him close, and then the quarterback draw, which, which gets him the touchdown. And, of course, on that drive, he was aided by a real bad pass interference penalty uh, on the Indianapolis Colts and uh, uh, Zaire Franklin. So uh, they get a win, and they're now 9-1. and one. And, and so what we look at in this game is they had enough to win. They put the ball in the hands of their quarterback, and they also made some adjustments to handle the run, which everybody was scared about. What were they going to do? Jonathan Taylor is going to rip them up. What about next week and a week after that when you got Aaron uh, Taylor and, and uh, uh, Aaron Saquon, Jones, and AJ Aaron Jones and, yep. and Saquon Barkley coming up your way? And, and of course, Derrick Henry. So um, those were all, all good parts. The quarterback rescued them today. They did stop the run to, to a large extent after giving up some yards to Jonathan Taylor early. Uh, and they took advantage of a team that didn't want to win. Yeah, and like we, I said time and time again, watch, watch Indianapolis's body language in the second half. They just wanted to make sure they didn't make a mistake, didn't turn the football over. I'm sure they're sitting around, wait a minute, we have a 13-3 lead on this team. We've held this explosive offense to three points for much of this game. All we have to do is don't turn over the football and we have a chance. And nine times out of ten, when you start playing that conservative type football in a game like this, it will come back and bite you. And lo and behold, you put the game in the hands of your most athletic player in Jalen Hurts, and he took advantage of every opportunity you give. Indianapolis defense didn't give them a lot of opportunities, but they found what worked in that fourth quarter. Give the ball to Jalen. Let him run it. Let him make him play honest and see if he can stop it. They couldn't stop it. Yeah, and, and also, see, the big swing in this game, which we looked at, that felt really against a good team probably hurts the Eagles, was when Taylor fumbles on that one, when he got stripped trying to get more yards. And then the Eagles give it back because A.J. gets stripped after he catches that crossing pattern. Uh, uh, they got the ball down in, in really close range to score a touchdown, yes. which may have put the game out of reach for the Eagles, and they just couldn't get the, the job done. And Paris Campbell had a, had a big play past Josiah Scott. They got close, and, and they just couldn't get it done. They had settled for a field goal. That wound up there being their undoing. Mike, but that happened mm. twice. Yeah. They, you yep. know, that, that not only um, – not only on the on that last fumble, but the second fumble. The second fumble, the Eagles defense held up and forced the field goal. The second one, they hold up and they force another field goal, but he pushes off to the right. I mean, you're talking about the difference between winning and losing. So big day by the defense, massive day by the defense to be able to after, you know, immediately after two turnovers to hold a team to just and they got them they getting the ball in plus territory like inside the 30 yeah are you kidding me yeah and then Ryan had two big pass plays on that drive too he hit the one to to uh, Pierce in the middle of the field for a first down yeah and and then he hit that one to Paris Campbell and, and they looked like they were rolling and it's just not a good team doesn't doesn't take advantage to the extent where they put the game out of reach. And Indianapolis is not a great team, and we saw that today. All right, let's do a little two-minute drill. <laughs> well, so wait a quick hitters for you guys. Wait, 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 before you go wait. to the two-minute drill, okay, you keep talking about that they're not a good team. They're not. They're not. They're hey, not. listen, Washington wasn't a good team. <laughs> you know, they figured out a way to finish it last week. So, I mean, you can't. I'm not taking it away from the Eagles. Okay. I'm not, okay. Take, I'm not trying to take it okay. away from I'll, I'll, I'll leave I'm it, saying a, a I'll good alone, team. Man will take advantage of, of those kind of opportunities and seal a deal. There's and no doubt about it. Indianapolis is not at that level. So I that gave the that. Eagles a chance but to the win Eagles, this game. But the Eagles are a better team than the Washington Commanders, and they're a better team yeah. than the Indianapolis Colts. Okay? My only point is, is some balance here because last week, as a better team, they had every opportunity to win that game at the end, and they fumbled it away again. Okay? Today... You talk about Indianapolis, they had the game in, the, in, you know, in their back pockets for three quarters. And then the Eagles woke up and figured out a way to win the football game. Sometimes it just works out oh, that they, way. And I, they've I done think, that many times this year, Seth. I, I think we also have to take into consideration, you know, that kid McLaughlin hits a 51-yard field goal for the Colts. He come back 
he comes back and misses another field goal. That would have given the Colts 19 points. What kind of onus would that have put on the outcome of this game as well when you look at the way the game played itself out? Could the Eagles have been two points shy instead of one-point victors? Hey, listen, they were, they, yeah. they were, they were going to have to score twice. There's no yeah. doubt about yeah. it if they kicked that field goal. All right, two-minute drill. Um, have they figured out how to stop the run? We are talking last week about the template that everybody now had that you can run the ball against the Eagles, and they changed it up a little bit. This is a really good rushing team with a really good running back, and they shackled them. So have they turned the corner on that, Seth? I think they have enough, enough reinforcements to be able to control the run when they want to. It's going to be a chess game the rest of the way for, these football, for this football team and this defense, and this is why. Again, versus their four-man front, they cannot stop the run. Versus their five-man front, you can't run against it. So the chess match is going to be, okay, you know, when, when on first and second down, you might get more passes. You might get more passes on first and second down than you would normally get. Why? Because there are guys short in the back, and you know that Jonathan, Jonathan Gannon is going to play ultra conservative in the back. You're going to get, you're either going to get cover four or cover six. Cover four is quarters all the way across the back. Or you're going to get cover, cover six. You're going to get, you know, um, quarter, quarters, halves. So that means that guys are going to be playing soft. So the better quarterbacks, what are they going to do? They're going to take what you give them, and they're going to methodically move down the field. If you're not going to give them the run via the five-man front, guess what? I'll just hitch and out you to death. First down, first down, five, ten, five, three, five, whatever it is. I'm just going to take what you give me. So then Jonathan Gannon is going to have to make, you know, a major decision. You know, do I go back to four men so I can get too high and, and, and be able to take care of the underneath stuff? Or do I roll the dice and stay with the five-man front and be able to control first and second okay. down versus the run. Do they have a better chance, though, going with a four-man front with those reinforcements, with Sue and Joseph now in the fold? No. no. Will they trust no. those guys beyond this? It's not no. just them. It's not just them. So you heard Lane talk about how they were moving guys around and shooting gaps and whatnot. That's what Jonathan Gannon needs to do in, in, in his four-man line and allow his linebackers to adjust to where the defensive linemen are shooting and the games that you're running. Right now, they're like sitting ducks. You know, you got a two technique and a three technique. They're both getting doubled and pushed off the ball. And we've seen T.J. Edwards today. He's standing there looking in the backfield trying to see the ball. And by the time he locates the ball, the tackle of the guard is hitting him in the mouth. So if you don't make a change, if you don't, if you don't, make, if you don't start adjusting how your defensive tackles are playing the run in your four-man front, it's, you, you're not going to change it because, you know, it, I, I give you a classic case in point. When I was in junior high school, I played defensive tackle. I was always taught, anytime you get the double team, take a knee. Because when you take a knee, it splits the double team. Once I take a knee and I pop back up, guess what? I'm still in my gap, but now I'm on my feet and I'm ready to play. But what I also do is I take one of those guys off of me and allow the linebacker to flow to the ball. Now, if I can remember that from what, 40 years ago, you think that you think this coaching staff might might want to coach these guys that when you feel the double team instead of standing up, just take a damn knee, make a pile, let the linebackers and the safeties come down and make the play? No, they're just getting pushed off the ball in the four-man front. And that's not going to change because it, that was a problem last year. It was a problem when Jordan Davis got hurt this year. It's the major reason why the Eagles went and got Jordan Davis and brought in Hassan Reddick to be able to take care of that run game. All right, uh, another quick question. Jalen Hurts obviously took the game into his own hands today. Uh, we saw uh, the running game sputter a little bit. Uh, we have Goddard out now. So things are kind of discombobulated. Will they have to do more of that, D, having their quarterback run the ball? I think so. I think we're going to see some similar stuff to Lamar Jackson. Look at how many times Lamar Jackson runs a football uh, in a game. And I think to open up the run game a little bit more, if, if, if you're opposing defensive linemen are starting to pinch these gaps and making it that much more difficult 
in terms of running against your RPOs and your stretch runs, then you're going to have to do what we saw the Eagles do in the fourth quarter. We saw Jalen do more of that earlier in the season than they got away from it, and we're like, wait a minute. He only ran the ball five times, six times. You know, Now he's back 16 times a day. A lot of those in the fourth quarter were called running plays. To open up that running game a little bit more, you have the most athletic player in your offense is your quarterback. You're going to have to utilize it. Personally, I don't like my quarterbacks running the ball 15, 16 times a game. But until further notice, if it works, if it helps open up the run game and the offense more so, do what you have to do. You know, what makes what makes football such an intriguing game is there's no balance. You don't have 12 players and 12 players. You got an odd amount. So that means that there's a, a strength and a weakness to every defense, okay? And what the Eagles have been able to do is take advantage of the numbers. What the Colts did today is they flipped the numbers in their favor, and it took the Eagles to the fourth quarter to, to reflip the numbers in their, you know, to, to their advantage. So to D. Gunn's point, yeah, we, we don't want to see Jalen Hurts run. We don't want to see him take those hits. But in order for this offense to succeed, He's going to have to run the ball more so that he can make them adjust out of what they're doing so that they can get back to doing what they really want to do. All right, two minutes are up, so I have a question for you and for everybody out there. You want to save up to 40% on your car insurance? Well, we're going to pause right now for 15 seconds and tell you exactly how. Hi, I'm Jim Muehlbronner, Managing Partner at DelVal Insurance Group. Give us a call. We're a local, knowledgeable agency, not an 800 number. Go Birds! There you go. Simple as that. 15 seconds, we solved all your insurance problems. <laughs> all right. Uh, is it time for Mr. McMullen? Do we have John McMullen? We don't have John McMullen yet. So uh, I'm curious to know what his analysis to this game is. Uh, you know, you look at next week, uh, and, and it's a legitimate team. I mean, uh, I don't know. From week to week, I wouldn't I call it legitimate. I, I, can't, I can't tell what they are from week to week. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. At as least, long as you, know, you got Aaron Rodgers, you legit. Yeah, that's what I was saying. There's you know, a quarterback. Man, come on, man. It's going to make some plays or has the potential to make you some plays. So. Aaron Rodgers played like the Aaron Rodgers of old against Dallas. He came out last week against Tennessee and played like he hadn't played in, in weeks. I, I can't remember how many times Aaron Rodgers missed open wide receivers. He's been doing it all season long. Now, granted, they don't have, they've don't they always had a problem with these young pass catchers dropping passes, not knowing their assignments. But Aaron Rodgers has been way off this season, and you don't know which Aaron Rodgers is going to show up. Well, Sunday like, night. like Jekyll and Hyde, you never know. So he may come in here and he could be Dr. Jekyll, he could be Mr. Hyde. You don't know. <laughs> no, I, he, he has, uh, he's like been uninspired. I, I wonder if, you know, I hate to make this kind of a, but I wonder if their personal lives, like their unsettled, harmonious personal lives, mess them up. I think it's affected Brady this year. No. You think it's affected Aaron Rodgers? No. You want, you want to know why? Because. <laughs> I'm not going to name the year. I'm not going to name the instance of the time. I was going through a real tough time in my life, and you want to know when? You want to know where my sanctuary was? Where my sanct? Where my my solace was? The field. Sunday. Yeah. Sunday. It wasn't even practice. Yeah. It was Sunday, because Sunday was the only time that I could just shut it all off, and be in the moment of what I love to do, and I had and I and I had no cares in the world. The minute the game was over, I mean, just it just washed over me all over again. And, and the ensuing weeks was always the same. So if these guys, you know, if, if you're wired the right way where, you're, where you want to, where football means that much to you, I mean, you're starting to see Brady come out of it a little bit. I think there was a whole lot going yeah. on. Yeah. Like when he came back after those 10 days that he missed in training camp, yeah. I mean, his face was all drawn in. He was a mess, mm -hmm. you know. So it, it would have been hard for us to believe that, you know, he would have been able to step in and be the Brady of old. But now that the divorce is final sure. and everything, sure. you know, you, you, right. you're moving on. Hey, and she, you know. and she moved on with oh, yeah. a jujitsu hey, man hey, Mike. in Costa Rica for hey, crying hey, out loud. Hey, Mike, some people believe Aaron Rodgers spent too much time with that Amazon peyote this past summer, and it's still affecting him. Right. Hey, hey, he might, he might still be hitting whatever it was he was. <laughs> this concludes the TMZ portion of the Eagles post game show. It's time to talk to the man who 